Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are covering the Winter Cup Finals hosted by the Fleet Network. As always, I will leave a link in the pinned comment for their Discord server so you can join with your fleet if you're interested in joining future tournaments. Before I get started, I do want to give a special shout out to MetaJerk and Tactic Angel who do live coverage of these tournament matches over on MetaJerk's channel. Links also in the pinned comment. Alright, so without further ado, let's get to our breakdown of the competitors. We On the left, we have Warfare at Sea Atlantic. On the right, we have Salty Sailors. Alright, let's start with the right. The Salty Sailors are bringing a Friesland, a Loyang, a Chapayev, a Rochester, a Lion, a Missouri, a Jean Bart, and a Parsifal. Now we'll see, the biggest battle I think is going to come down to the Parsifal versus the Saipan. And I can't wait to see how the Parsifal player stacks up against the known great player in the Warfare at Sea Saipan. Speaking of which, on Warfare at Sea we have an Oster Jotland, a Friesland, an Azure Lane Chapayev, an Ochakov, an Azure Lane New Jersey, a Massachusetts B, and the Kansas. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the main event of the evening. Fighting out of the left corner, we have Warfare at Sea Atlantic, and their competitors fighting out of the right corner are the Salty Sailors, who will be victorious in this best out of three competition, aka first to two. Now, I expect a much more competitive fight between these two teams than we got in the previous uh, battle that I showcased for you guys. But the main focus for both of these teams is going to be cap and map control, right? Same thing we talked about in the previous uh, video for these uh, these fights. Anytime you get a competitive environment, cap control is going to be essential. So right out the gate, you can see that the enemy carrier has flown into the center with the friendly carrier, except he broke away from him and immediately spotted the uh, friendly destroyer and is going straight for that destroyer and cruiser. Meanwhile, our carrier is providing air support over the Bravo cap, while our second destroyer moves in to grab the Bravo cap. Now, we have a Jean Bart spotted at 19 kilometers right on the edge of our range, uh, turning away, so... Uh, Yonkonomics decides not to take that shot, don't blame you there. Keeping yourself from being spotted while you're moving towards a flank and you're, you're exposed broadside is definitely ideal. Now, I would expect him to start to turn in at any moment, and here we go, we are starting to kind of think about turning in, uh, because at this point we want to start getting, getting angled towards the cap, right? Because we already see that there's an enemy battleship roughly in the exact same location on mirroring us, so the sooner we can get turned in, the better, right? So that if that guy gets spotted again, we'll be in a better position to take advantage of it. Now, one of the enemy destroyers has moved into the, uh, the Alpha Cap. The friendly destroyer, despite being harassed by the carrier, is cap capturing the Bravo Cap, which we've talked about before, is the most important cap in the entire map because it's the hardest one to take. And we do secure that cap right at the beginning. Will we be able to hold on to it? Only time will tell. Um, Warfare at Sea has elected to send three of their ships over towards the Charlie Cap, which provides a crossfire into the Bravo Cap to help stop that. Uh, judging by the mini-map, we can see that one battleship for the enemy and one cruiser plus the destroyer is at the Alpha Cap. The, uh, the carrier was spotted mid and the other one of their battleships was spotted coming over to this side as well. Now we do take a little bit of a hit here from the Jean Bart. We return fire as well as have teammates also singling out a ship, which is another thing that I think a lot of people should start to pay attention to in these competitive games is when you get a chance to focus an enemy down, you should try to take it. Anytime you get a numbers advantage on an enemy, you, you definitely want to try to make as most as much of that situation as possible, right? Now unfortunately Jean Bart goes dark. There's a lot of AA in these lobbies as well. So to see a carrier shine in a situation where there's so much AA out there um, is is also something we need to keep an eye on as well because uh, the Saipan, I think, is probably going to be the better choice for these competitive matches just because of its ability to drop multiple rounds, whether it be multiple bombs or multiple torpedoes, uh, very easily. So 
I, I do expect more people to start gravitating towards it and potentially even the Pobeda with its ability to remove destroyers, right? Uh, remember, the Pobeda's big thing is that it gets those skip bombs, which are devastating versus destroyers, but also it's able to launch its ordnance outside of people's effective AA range for the most part. Um, but uh, Yonkonomics here is getting focused out. He's found himself in a bit of a crossfire. He's got a Missouri firing at his essential broadside here. He's definitely over-angled to the Missouri. Uh, he's staying bow in towards the guys that are firing over the island, but it's not really going to help him in this situation because HE doesn't care about your angle so much. Now, he starts to turn in here. He has slowed down a little bit, but starts to turn in. He is going to take a couple of pins here, uh, mostly over pins, but uh, 20, I think it was 2600 or 2600 damage a piece. And then the bombs from the uh, Parsifal come in it and the Yonkonomics finds himself quickly down on HP. Like, this was not a not a good start for Yonkonomics, that is for sure. Uh, will he survive this engagement? I don't know. He's got 19,000 damage, and he's lost 50,000 damage at this point, and he just keeps getting chunked, uh, both by the carrier and the Missouri. Now, one of the, the things that I will say is, I don't know why he's, he's elected for the Massachusetts B here, um, the Massachusetts B is an enhanced secondary ship, and most of the time in these sorts of matches, you're simply not going to run into, you know, a situation where the secondaries are going to be all that useful. So I wonder why he chooses the Massachusetts, and maybe I'll get a chance to talk to, uh, to him at some point, why he chose the Massachusetts over, say, an Iowa-class battleship, which has a ton more uh, anti-aircraft capability. Um, now... We do have the Missouri over-angled here a little bit. He's going for a superstructure hit, and we do survive for the moment. Unfortunately, we get a terrible RNG roll, two, two bounces and one overpin, uh, which I don't think he actually got an overpin's worth of damage, but uh, he's, he's not long for this world. You can see the carrier comes in and absolutely cleans up, which is what you'd expect when you catch a battleship by itself. Like, the carrier is going to be able to single that out. And the Parsifal is very good at getting rid of people if you can aim those AP bombs. Now, we look at the other side of the map. We've got Feel My Flame in the Kansas, who's double-fired currently. We have one of our cruise, or one of our destroyers sitting in the uh, smoke screen, spamming HE at the enemy Lion. Which, again, out of all the ships in the game that you could try to burn down in the, in the particular match, like, the Lion being focused by HE is kind of not the the answer here because the lion is the one ship that's got the super heals that can absolutely heal a ridiculous amount of HP back. So, are they focusing the wrong target here? I understand why they're doing it, but you might you might be better suited to try to uh, find somewhere else for your HE for the time being and then come back later to focus the uh, the lion down, which it appears to be kind of what they're doing. Unfortunately, we do have a friendly battleship, which I believe is the Kansas, moving in right into the Lion. And this is what I actually want to see a little bit more of. Is Other than the fact that he's losing all of his hit points, you, you want to push, push the Lion out of its little hidey hole, right? Once you close that distance, you're going to be able to AP the crap out of a Lion very quickly, as we saw in the previous uh, video. But uh, unfortunately, trading too many of his hit points doing it. You can see a lot of a lot of crossfire coming here from the uh, center of the map. Uh, both teams have a destroyer parked in the Bravo cap, and neither of the two destroyers are actively trying to counter the other destroyer. Uh, one is providing fire support, and the other one is, I think, also pr providing some fire support. Uh, but at the end of the day. I would like to see those two destroyers try to, you know, duke it out so that they're not just sitting there. Um, these are these are just little things that I noticed during the battle. Now, our destroyer has been spotted by the enemy carrier, as well as a cruiser, battleship, and a destroyer that is also an alpha. Our cruiser behind that destroyer has an island cover from at least the, the battleship and the cruiser, but is probably spotted due to the uh, carrier and the destroyer, so I'm not sure how effective that island cover is going to be. Now, both the enemy destroyers are actually spotted in the Bravo cap at this point, so now that we know that, these guys should absolutely go take out that other destroyer. There is no reason that they have a two destroyer advantage in this cap. There is no reason these two destroyers would leave that destroyer alive, right? 
Uh, you can't be reckless in this situation, and they do hold the cap advantage. Uh, despite giving up the center cap, they do have the outside caps. Again, a two cap advantage is always going to be the best possible scenario, right? You're not, you're very, very rarely going to pick up a three cap advantage in a game like this. But both teams have kind of settled in. They're both dug in as hard as they can be dug in. Uh, but unfortunately, we have lost our Kansas. We have lost our Massachusetts. So we are down on points pretty hard, and they had the cap advantage. So at this point, it comes down to Warfare at Sea Atlantic to, to make the decision of what they want to do. Uh, you can see the New Jersey, or the Missouri, I forget which one it is, coming out from behind the island. It's an Iowa-class battleship. I, I think it's Missouri. I think it's a radar. Uh, coming out from behind its island at this point to try to make something happen. Uh, but he's also pulling out in front of what I believe is the Jean Bart over there. Now, we, we rush over to the other side of the map. We have an Ochakov and a... Good lord. Is it Chapayev? Or are, th are they both Chapayevs? I forget. Either way, two Russian cruisers slugging it out in open waters. But, unfortunately, it just looks like, yeah, and there it goes. Rochester manages to take down the Ostergotland, and that leaves just one destroyer that's in the middle of the map, which we know is in the middle of the map because he's been there for approximately seven minutes at this point. And uh, despite doing his best to give some fire support to his team, his teammates have crumbled around him and uh, he is now at a decided disadvantage. Not only in points, but also cap control and map control. These guys are finding themselves basically surrounded on all sides at this point. The enemy, or the friendly cruiser is being chased off by the carrier, which is gonna allow those guys at Alpha to start to wrap in behind these guys that are left on the uh, warfare at sea side of things. So they're gonna be able to wrap around behind the Bravo cap and start to potentially put pressure on the enemy care or on the Warfare at Sea carrier player as well. Uh, so again, it is good to see this kind of uh, competitive play, but there are definitely moments that we can learn from in these moments as well. So as you can see, the friendly or the, the enemy, the Jean Bart is about to go down. He's lost all of his hit points friendly carriers doing his job whittling him away which again against that much AA is pretty pretty impressive but it's all by itself it doesn't really have any support from the AA side of things so that battleship should go down which brings us a lot closer in terms of firepower but he's still alive and as long as he's still alive he can still shoot okay that is definitely not a Jean Bart I definitely oopsied there so sorry about that but, uh, again, he should be going down pretty soon. The, the, the destroyer is starting to shoot at the Missouri. Yeah, that was Missouri. <laughs> so, it was New Jersey on the other side. The Missouri was for the, um, the Salty Sailors. Good Lord. I'm, I'm getting the names mixed up between the two teams. Um, but, friendly Ochikov goes down to the enemy Rochester. And, at this point, it's just... A matter of cleanup right our team can try to prolong it as long as possible but now we've lost the uh, chappy as well the battleship will not last very long by himself uh, the two destroyers are flipping the b cap so we have pretty much all but lost this match at this point so we're just gonna go ahead and speed up the rest of this match until it ends because there's really not a whole lot else that that's gonna happen here all right, so I think the key takeaways from this particular match was simply getting a little too over aggressive. We got a couple of battleships that were taken out very early on, which makes it very difficult on a team to control the map because you lose that hard hitting ability to control those crossfires. Having uh, Yonkonomics go down to the carrier and uh, being a little bit over angled to the enemy uh, Missouri, and then also having our Kansas kind of go in a little bit aggressively there trading all of his hit points trying to rush the enemy um lion didn't end well so salty sailors go up one nothing in the series all right so let's get straight into match number two this time we're on warrior's path now there was no no ship changes that i seen in between matches that's why i didn't reshow the the teams but i did notice that yonkonomics did swap over from azure lane colorado as his commander to uh, Azure Lane, New Jersey. So he's opting for a more accuracy slash damage 
build here. So we'll see if that makes a big difference in this particular match. Now right out the gate, once again, we have our carrier flying directly into the center of the map. He's going to be spotting for his team. Um, he's got a battleship spotted directly across from the middle. And the enemy carrier is doing essentially the exact same thing he did in the previous match where he flies into the center to spot and then immediately breaks off towards a flank to try to catch a destroyer. And once again, he goes right into the path of the friendly destroyer at Alpha, which is just a bad day for that destroyer because you're immediately going to be targeted by everybody in the lobby because nobody has shot anything yet. Now, Yonkonomics takes a shot at the Missouri. Missouri starts moving forward and he gets an overpin for his med. Well, actually, it was a full pin. Sorry. 5,000 damage was a full pin out of the one shell. So about as good a shot or as good a result as you can expect out only hitting one shell uh, at that angle. So we'll see if we can get another shot into him. Is he going to opt for the, the blind fire with auto aim? Nope, nope. He doesn't have the ability to aim over the island at this point, or to lob that island at this point. Uh, we do have a cruiser with us. The rest of the team is kind of focusing on mid slash alpha. So it'll be interesting to see how Yonkadomics decides to get, whether he wants to push or not. There is one battleship that we know is spotted over here, Charlie. Uh, so at this point, could, could make an argument that we could potentially push into the Charlie cap, but you don't want to go all ham on deck, right? Like you don't want to go full ham here. You want to kind of just poke your nose out, see what's out there first, because so far the only thing we've spotted is a battleship over here, but there could be a destroyer. He's not been spotted yet. Neither of the, well, I say neither. The enemy destroyer has been spotted just off the alpha cap with the cruiser and battleship that's over there. Seems like that team does a pretty good job of splitting their forces up. So I would expect one of their destroyers to be near either Charlie or Bravo here. And the other destroyer clearly is at Alpha with that battleship and cruiser. Um, the enemy carrier is doing a pretty decent job of staying over the center, keeping people lit up as best he can. Uh, but also trying to find and, and get rid of the friendly destroyer. But once again... Uh, Warfare at Sea is going hard for that center cap, and they sell out for it, and it looks like... Oh, no! Are they... It looks like somebody's contested it, so we think we know where the other destroyer is at this point. So, Yonkonomics is going to be uh, just kind of sticking his nose out here. He's probably realized that the other enemy destroyer is in Bravo at this point. So we have, again, a stalemate at Bravo. We have Warfare at Sea actually almost grabbing the Alpha Cap here, but the enemy destroyer likely reversed into the cap to stop that as well. So both teams have a destroyer at Alpha and Bravo, so neither team is capturing either of those currently. So it's going to come down to which team can get rid of the destroyer that's that's contesting at this point. Now, enemy Jean Bart has been spotted off of our 11 o'clock here on the Charlie Cap, and he's probably not alone. There's still a cruiser or... Yeah, there's still a cruiser that we haven't seen. So I would expect one of these cruisers to be here. Likely hiding behind the island, waiting for their battleship to spot for them. Or the carrier to come over and assist as well. Once again, we do have a situation where the friendly cruiser is so far away that he's not able to provide any sort of anti-aircraft or anything like that support for the Massachusetts. So as soon as the enemy aircraft carrier figures out that Yonkonomics is essentially all by himself, unless the carrier supports him here, I don't see that Yonkonomics is going to have a good time here because as soon as that carrier finds out, he's just going to get harassed by that carrier. And again, while the Massachusetts is a very good ship in standard mode, uh, in, a, in a battle like this, it is not necessarily going to be the best choice. Now, he comes out full broadside. This is a huge misplay. But Jean Bart only has HE loaded. Remember, Jean Bart also gets a reload booster. So I, oh, he knocks out one of the guns, gets very fortunate there. So despite coming out over angled, oh, he's being a little too, too, or too uh, casual about getting himself angled here. Probably not wanting to, get, to commit fully to this cap. Uh, which I totally get, but at the same time, he may have been better suited here to just go ahead and continue that turn and then get between the islands to protect himself somewhat. Uh, but here, he gets an unfortunate flood by the airdrop torpedoes of the enemy Parsible. He is going to try to take out an Agilene Chapayev out here, but let's be honest, good luck. I mean, you got competitive players in that thing, so 
aiming is going to be difficult at medium to long range, which is exactly where he's sitting. He's close enough that he can easily hit you, but far enough away that you can't easily return the favor. Uh, he gets the permafire on Yonkonomics here, and I would expect Yonkonomics to be running fight fire with fire, uh, but unfortunately for Yonkonomics, he's in trouble. Uh, John Bart returns the favor of knocking out a third of, of Yonkonomics here, and at this point, I feel like we're we're not going to have a good time. We're, we're being torched by the Choppy. We've got the DPM of the John Bart that's better than what we've got, and then on top of that, we have the uh, enemy battleship at Bravo that could potentially have uh, stopped us as well. The the good thing that he could have done, like I said, if he'd have committed to going into the cap and then got between the islands, he could have broken uh, contact with one of the two enemies, and that would have allowed him to f uh, to focus one of them down, instead of allowing both of them to kind of beat him up. But here you go, the uh, Chappie is just doing what Chappie does best, which is just E-O-P-H-E -E to, to everything. Doesn't matter where that thing hits, it's going to pin. Uh, we are about to get a heal up, but that's only going to bring us up to about maybe 12,000 hit points. So not a lot of health there, unfortunately, uh, as we get our heal off. It, it won't take much for the enemy Chappie and, and John Bart to take that out. Now, we did manage to grab the Bravo Cap, and uh, the teams have kind of still stalemated over at the Alpha Cap. So we've got a points lead accruing. But we can't afford to lose our battleship at this point. Now, if I'm the enemy right now, I'm, I'm getting on the comms and saying, Hey, Yonkonomics is low. We need that carrier over here. Finish him off. He's by himself, roughly. So just get over here. Finish him off with some armor piercing, possibly even some bomb drops. Uh, the carrier should already know that because he already got a perma or he already had a flood on him. And so they should know that he's pretty low. So I would expect, and you can see the carrier appears to be flying over the mountains, is, a, is about to head right here for Yonkonomics again. So yeah, I, I think that uh, our time in this Massachusetts is limited at this point. And with all that HE that we've been taking, our AA has definitely been uh, paying the price. And there's the nasty, nasty AP bombs from the enemy Parsable. One of them was definitely a Citadel. The other one was a full penetration. Over 10,000 damage done, leaving us with just 929. And we are radared by the enemy as well. Whether it's the Missouri behind us who is charging the, the center cap or it's the um, Chipayev over here on this far right side. But uh, you can see the Lo Yang is in the center cap as well and the enemy is starting to gain the advantage in map control again. So they managed to flip the, the Bravo cap which is a huge task in and of itself. But I wonder how much they're trading to do so. The Jean Bart looks like he has taken an absolute beating from the carrier which is again... It's, it, it's impressive more than anything. Between our cruiser and the carrier um, focusing down that Jean Bart, like there's not a whole lot he can do about it. He has great AA on the Jean Bart, but at the end of the day, it's a side pan and it will have your, your ship with bad intentions. Like it, it's just not a good time to be focused down by a side pan in any ship, no matter how much AA you have. Uh, but you get focused down by a Saipan and a DPM cruiser, and it's a bad day. <laughs> but with the Jean Bart down, that actually, and they also lost their Missouri as well. So the enemy, despite moving forward and helping to get rid of the, or flip the B cap, they've given up both or two of their three battleships in the process, which is, like we said in the last match, is not a good trade because it's only a matter of time before that starts to catch up to you. You start to lose that ability to affect those crossfires or at least punish those crossfires. Now, I will say this, Yaw Economics is not long for this world. You got the enemy Parsable coming in with torpedoes and that's gonna do it. Um, now we've got a Russian on Russian cruiser uh, fight at Charlie for who's winning that one. We have the carrier doing what carriers do best, which is harass the destroyers. You can see our Saipan going straight for the enemy destroyer that, that managed to grab the, the Bravo cap. Our friendly destroyer is spotted and being shot from the enemy destroyer that's over by Alpha. But speaking of Alpha, our friendly destroyer and Ochikov are managing to uh, flip the cap at Alpha. So now we have wrapped up the, the left side flank, essentially. They have their last battleship there. And we have a battleship out on the edge that should be able to get a pretty solid crossfire with his cruiser and destroyer there to potentially provide support. Now, the Lo Yang, I would expect torpedoes to be coming from 
both uh, Lo Yang and the friendly Ochakov here. Our battleship is a little bit over-angled for no real reason here, other than maybe he's trying to maximize his guns on target. Uh, it is a Kansas, so I guess that makes sense. Trying to do the Dreadnought Shuffle. If you're going to do the Dreadnought Shuffle, though, you better make sure that the enemy is not capable of shooting you back while you're opening that angle. Um, so, as he continues to put some pressure on that battleship and cruiser at Alpha, um, the friendly cruiser is starting to head away from Alpha. The friendly destroyer is starting to move out of Alpha as well, heading into the middle to try to consolidate forces at the center and try to focus down the destroyers that are there. Um, we've got friendly carrier heading over to help with the fight at Alpha, I think. No, he's still still hanging around at, at uh, Bravo here. So we'll see how that works out for the team. But uh, they're putting a lot of faith in uh, Feel My Flame over there in the Kansas at holding that flank down with the battleship and a cruiser there, um, as well as a destroyer nearby. Both teams still have both of their destroyers. The uh, Warfare at Sea guys have the advantage in points because they have taken out two battleships to their uh, losing one. But everybody has traded some hit points at this point. So nobody... Oh my god, what an absolutely devastating torpedo drop for the the friendly um, Warfare at Sea guys. Like, just absolutely neutering the enemy cruiser there. Like, he went from full health to basically no health in one drop. That is, that is the power of the Saipan. That is absolutely silly. Uh, speaking of the Kansas and Feel My Flame, he is feeling the flame at this point. He's got a fire burning in uh, the front midship at the superstructure. Uh, the cruiser is doing his best to try to stop him, but he gets a shot over the battleship. Can he finish off the cruiser? No, the cruiser lives. The cruiser lives and so does the lion. He does put out the fire one way or the other. And so he goes back to try to finish off the, the cruiser once again. And oh my God, he, he fails to take him out again. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but fortunately Ochakov coming over. Jay Trank and the Ochakov managing to crossfire the Rochester and help get rid of him. Now, I do expect Feel My Flame to lose this fight with the uh, Lion at this point. He's very low health. Lion can load up HE and just absolutely neuter him at this point. No, re no reason to even worry about it. But if the Lion gets over cocky, this, this is still a Kansas. I mean, 12 American armor piercing rounds going down range is nasty. So you don't want to take that chance. So uh, I would expect the carrier to be thinking about coming over here. But it looks like the enemy carrier is actually going to try to help uh, save his his friendly cruiser, but unfortunately not able to do so. Now, will he be able to take down the enemy cruiser the way that our cruiser and carrier has managed to take out his? Well, only time will tell. Uh, but at this point, we have all of the caps. Uh, they are contesting the Alpha cap. They are contesting the Bravo cap. Um, but they are no longer contesting the Charlie cap. So we have locked that one in. We have a 200 point advantage, essentially. And at this point, it's just a mop up duty, right? We know there are two destroyers, but with everybody grouped up the way, the way they are right now, uh, the enemy destroyer could potentially get some good torpedo work in. Obviously that's a Friesland, he has no torpedoes and he's very low health. So I would expect him to get finished off pretty quickly. You can see Saipan coming in with our, the HE bombs and down he goes. I'm telling you, man, the Saipan player has been absolutely clutch in the last the last video as well as this one. Uh, th this this has been a pretty impressive showing, a nice comeback win from from Warfare at, or War at Sea. No, warfare at sea. Good lord. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a nice one. The the first match they lost, they they got their stuff their stuff back together, and they managed to overcome. Uh, Yonkonomics wasn't able to get much of anything going here in this one, and yet they still pulled together and and made this one happen. So well done by Warfare at Sea Atlantic for picking up the victory in this one, and we'll go ahead and speed this one up to finish this this match out. Overall, both teams have very good carrier players that know when to focus down specific ships, so I'm glad to see that. But uh, Warfare at Sea coming in and picking up their win, making this a 1-1 series, who, which means the next battle decides who wins and who loses the Winter Cup. And now we are going to be on Northern Waters to finish off the Winter Cup. 
Does that not sound like the perfect map to finish off the Winter's Cup? I mean, look, it's snowing and everything. But, uh... The only change I've seen from the two teams was from Yonkonomics once again. He did change his commander to the, um... Willis Lee commander, so he's going- he's opting for a more tank build commander in this one. Apparently he doesn't like getting yeeted by everybody in the map. But uh, we'll see if that helps him in this one once again. Um, just to see, you know, one thing that I had expect out of Yonkonomics after getting focused so hard by the carrier and uh, cruisers in the first two, two games would be to maybe play a bit more passively in this one early on so that he doesn't get focused or at least stay closer to his friendly so that he has a little bit of extra AA. But right off the bat, I mean, he is immediately spotted and you can see that that carrier is on his way with those torpedoes and the first drop from the carrier is on its way like this is just unbelievable that uh, the carrier is like you know what yonkonomics you don't get to have fun today and this can be a two two-edged sword as well like one you're getting rid of a very good player but everybody in this can be expected to be very good players right but you're also giving the leader of the enemy fleet Right? We know Yonkonomics, I believe, is the leader of Warfare at Sea. But you're also giving him, if you do take him out early, uh, as they get a unfortunate flood again, man. These these airdrop floods are brutal. Because now, look at the look at the crossfires coming in. You got the Azure Lane Chapayev firing from behind an island. Can't hit him there. But uh, he, he could get a perma flood here. Fortunately, doesn't. So we get a get a lucky. Get a little bit uh, fortunate there to not get a perma fire against us, so maybe maybe fate is changing a little bit. But we do have a battleship over here at Alpha. We have the Azure Lane Chapayev over here at Alpha. We already seen the enemy Lo Yang at the Bravo Cap. Uh, again, both teams focusing on contesting or at least trying to gain control over the Bravo Cap. The friendly destroyer has made it into Charlie, but it also appears that the enemy destroyer has made it into Charlie. So once again, both teams are fighting for control and actually surprisingly the enemy destroyer pulls out of bravo allowing warfare at sea to get the huge early cap in in the bravo cap which again we've said it before it's the hardest one to take but notice that he immediately gets back into it is this the strategy that they were looking for they were like okay Obviously, we don't want a situation where we, we sit here contested the entire game. So if we let him cap it, maybe he'll run away and then we can just cap it right back. He starts to do so and then immediately pulls out of the cap because he's being focused down by the enemy or by the Warfare at Sea uh, carrier player. I'm assuming there were some torpedoes dropped into that smoke screen from the carrier. Uh, the enemy Missouri has already lost a lot of hit points. Again, that's the downside of spawning in the middle on this map. You're going to be focused by everybody, right? Like, everybody can potentially shoot you. So, uh, you can see Yonkonomics is starting to push up. Missouri has lost a ridiculous amount of hit points, uh, which is huge. That's one of the, one of the team's radars uh, getting taken out real early if we can manage to pull it off. Um, between the carrier and potentially cruisers being able to shoot him but right now it's just the carrier doing all the work but he is essentially by himself so unless his carrier supports him that's going to be a bad day because Saipan just does not care Yonkonomics gets a shot is it going to be enough to finish him off he does catch the Missouri in a turn here is it going to get enough oh he didn't lead him enough and he swings and misses down down goes Frazier <laughs> but uh, no Missouri opting to try to run away at this point he has been absolutely brutalized by a carrier all that aa does not care when it comes to saipan like it's just not enough aa in the world going to protect you from saipan without some support but uh Yonkonomics once again gets another shot aiming a little bit further back this time going for the superstructure all he needs is one hit at this point and that missouri is going down and sure enough he actually gets two hits but only one of them was needed and down goes the missouri that's a huge point swing for the enemy team, or for, for Warfare at Sea. Not only is it a 100 point swing to lose a battleship, but it is also, it is also a radar that is gone early in the game. So huge win. And then Lo Yang is spotted by the friendly carrier. Yonkonomics takes a shot. Is it a good lead? Oh, unfortunately, just a, just a horrendous dispersion. Maybe going for that tank build wasn't the best idea in the, uh, Massachusetts here but uh, 
Either way, he should have a little bit faster reload with the tank build, and he definitely has a lot more survivability. Uh, but he did get a cut, uh, he did get a kill, and he does have a legendary mod on, so he's going to be doing a little bit more damage with each shell at this point. But uh, is it going to be enough? Now he is going to take another shot. The Lo Yang's coming out of a turn. The carrier is on point, man. This guy, I'm telling you, MVP has to go to the carrier in in the last video as well as this one. Yonkonomics gets a shot. Oh my God, that was so close. I think he got robbed, and then the second shots. I think the guy got away before before those ones fell as well. That first shell looked like it was tracking and unfortunately just came up a little bit short. Uh, but again, Yonkonomics doing a good job just contesting the cap at this point. Making sure that the enemy doesn't flip this cap. He doesn't have to do anything crazy. He's, he knows that he has a points lead. The enemy is putting a lot of their eggs in the Charlie cap and so far they have not been able to capitalize on it. The enemy destroyer is there but so is our destroyer. So they're contesting each other. The enemy carrier is flying all the way around the side of the map here. Assuming he's coming in for a uh, drop either on the cruiser or the carrier or not carrier But the uh, the battleship that's there looks like he's going for the the cruiser at this point coming in from almost Oh, no, nope. He's actually going for the destroyer um, Good call he's probably going for the de going for the cruiser and then notice the destroyer uh, Was there so now because he attacks the destroyer the destroyer is forced to get out of the cap That's gonna allow the enemy destroyer to potentially cap and flip C, but uh, the destroyer, not to be dismayed, is still hanging around, and now the cruiser is starting to think about a push into that cap as well, but there is the battleship that's a long ways away. Is he going to be able to help his teammate there? Uh, there's the cruiser getting lit up right on top of the destroyer, too, at Charlie, so we've got us a heck of a fight over on the other side of the map between Two destroyer, oh, a destroyer from each side, a cruiser from each side, and a battleship with the carrier support. Uh, you know, it, it is absolutely a must win on that side of the map. Everybody putting a lot of a lot of eggs in that basket. But you also have some some help from the middle of the map, from uh, Yonkonomics Warfare at Sea, and the drop from that part. Or, yeah, that Parsifal just absolutely neutered us again. Uh, this is one of the downsides of being stationary and being all by yourself in a battleship. If you don't have any any anti-aircraft support, the carrier is going to have their way with you. Um, but he holds fast. He's like, if I can just stay here long enough, just give my team a chance to win the other side, and then we should be good. Now, the Lo Yang gets spotted again. This carrier is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot harp on this guy enough. Uh, Juzzy, I think is his name. Well done, dude. Like You're just always in the right place at the right time to help your team. And uh, I think that has been the biggest, the biggest advantage that I've seen from Warfare at Sea uh, in these two matches that we, or the, the two series that we've showcased from them so far. Uh, their carrier player is just always on point. Like, dude is always doing what he has to do to try to get rid of the, the destroyer. He's always trying to help his team where he can. Uh, but yeah, Jaza, well done, my dude. He manages to take out the Lo Yang. Uh, that's a huge, huge win for, for Warfare at Sea. Warfare at Sea is starting to put the, the vice down. As you can see, their cruiser and destroyer have moved into Delta. The battleship has moved up as well over there. Meanwhile, we're getting some support. The, uh, the friendly battleship that was at the Bravo cap is now pushing in towards uh, the, the Charlie cap as well. So you're going to have two battleships, a cruiser and a destroyer at the Delta cap versus the enemy destroyer, cruiser, and battleship with the carrier support. Now, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, friendly carrier does here. It looks like Jaza is to, is here to help Yonkonomics again. And you can see here comes the torpedoes. That's four torpedoes coming in for the chap I have. And we know that this guy doesn't miss very often. So let's watch his health. He takes all of them. Jesus, man. It's just, it's just not fair, man. I, I would honestly, at this point, I would not be surprised if the Saipan actually ends up banned in... Um, in future tournaments because it's just too strong in this environment man there's nothing you can do about it even if you have all the aa in the world unless you're like stacked aa on top of each other you're just not going to stop the saipan from doing whatever it wants now uh we are contested at eight seconds left to get this cap that is unfortunate we almost pulled it back Almost pulled this off, but that chap I have can no longer push, so he's been pushed back. The Jean Bart is moving in. Uh, Yonkonomics is actually about to leave the cap, so unfortunately not going to be able to get the cap here. 
Um, I would expect him... We're spotted from the, the Bravo cap. There is a destroyer in the Bravo cap. I would expect Yonkonomics to make a decision pretty soon as to what he wants to do. His guns are on the wrong side to shoot the Jean Bart. Jean Bart feels like he's getting a little bit desperate here. He's starting to push in. Uh, maybe he's just moving up to the gap to provide some potential fire support across the map. But uh, you can see that the enemy... F it should be a Friesland, I believe, right? Yeah, enemy Friesland is spotted in the center, so we don't have to worry about torpedoes here. So we can let our teammates focus down the, the enemy Friesland if we can. But it looks like we are turning the rear guns around, and we will get a shot at the Friesland as well. Might as well. And any shells that we do should do about 1,400 damage, and we don't get anything. Again, that, that accuracy, it, it's, it's rough, man. When you need to make every single shot count in these kind of uh, engagements. And going for the tank build, I know he was focused in uh, the first two matches, but uh, going for the tank build has definitely hurt him in this last match when it comes to hitting some of these shots. He would have definitely been able to probably take out the low Yang earlier. But fortunately for him, it doesn't really matter because his team is doing everything they got to do. Now that looks like a much better shot, much better grouping, and we do hit one for 1,440 damage, I believe. Uh, but Jean Bart is in the gap. We're going to go ahead and, and commit to pushing around the end to try to help flank these guys, which will either drive them into the center of the map where his teams can, can focus them down, or it's going to lead to him being focused once again by the Jean Bart and the Chappie. So we do ha still have a look here at the enemy Friesland, but it looks like we're going to beach in order to try to get all of our guns to bear on the Friesland. We've got a beautiful look and finally a decent grouping and beautiful shot. Finally, finally getting some of the RNGs on your side. You gotta love it, man. Picking up our second kill with only 8,300 damage. Can we say yoinked? No. In this competitive environment, it doesn't matter if you're yoinking as long as they're dying. That's the main thing, right, folks? But this is huge. Both both destroyers are gone, plus one of their uh, radar battleships are gone. So they are in a bad way at this point. They do have the cap advantage at this point, but something tells me it's just not going to matter. Now, the friendly Friesland goes down, which is something we can't, we absolutely cannot afford at this point. Because while we do have the, the points lead, they have the cap lead. So if we start trading ships now... It could easily swing in the uh, the enemy's favor here. Now, Yonkonomics is just kind of sitting tight. We've got Juzza in the um, carrier coming over the top again to attack these guys. He's got a beautiful looking drop potential for that uh, Chepayev. But you can see the Chepayev and the Jean Bart are now together, which means they're going to be able to have twice the AA that they would be. And what does Juzza do? He doesn't do anything. He goes in, he, he spots for his team, and instead of attacking through that AA, decides to hang tight, let his teammates do what they got to do. Sometimes you just got to spot for your team, man. It, it seems it seems pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people would just fly into that AA and lose their planes. So this guy, once again, just showcasing how, how ridiculously good at carrier he really is. Or they really are, I should say. I don't know the person in particular, so I don't know if they're male or female. So they are fantastic carrier player. Now Jean Bart starting to feel the pressure a little bit. We are running out of time. They are down 300 points with a minute and a half to go. Have they sat on their, their uh, laurels a little too much? They're starting to push forward. Yonkonomics just playing hide and go seek at this point. Knows that all he has to do is get around the corner. They take a shot. They get an overpin with a one, two, three, four through the back. You'll love to see it. Uh, but they are simply not going to be able to catch up and be able to do a significant amount of damage here despite having Yonkonomics spotted. So again, I think this comes down. The carrier does take out the, the friendly Kansas, so that's another 100 points down. This is a very close game coming down to the wire. We lose one more ship. Oh, but then the lion goes down to a perma flood, and uh, that pretty much seals the deal. I thought, man, it was getting real, real exciting there for a moment. But yeah, Chappie is going to be able to come around the corner, but he is walking straight into a full gun broadside from a Massachusetts who aren't known for overpinning, but unfortunately, um, we lose the front guns on that rock, but the rear guns make sure that they punish, and the rear turret of justice does just that with 10,000 damage uh, from just the rear gun alone. But we should be able to get loaded. I would like to see the Chappie have switched to AP here. He's got a beautiful look through the rear side plating. 
of the uh, the Massachusetts. He could absolutely be doing more damage with the the AP at this point. But again, utilizing the island as best he can, he takes a couple of the shells, hit the island, but the rest do what they got to do. And that is going to be a win. And our Winter Cup Finals champions, Warfare at Sea Atlantic. Well done to both teams. But uh, that was an exciting finish. I'll be honest. It looked like it was going to be going down to the wire. And it could have very easily. If that lion had survived, maybe, maybe there's a chance. But uh, some very good play on both sides. But again, I got to give the MVP to none other than the Saipan for Warfare at Sea. Man, that guy is always where he needs to be. So thank you so much for watching. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.